We are going to start our lesson by talking about factors. Factors were one of the concepts that we sort of skipped over in the introductory lessons, but today we're going to dig deeply into them and talk about how they're related to concepts of experimental design. A factor in the context of R is a specific type of data structure that we use for categorizing discontinuous data. Discontinuous data are data that you use for dividing things up into groups. This is in contrast to continuous data, which would be numbers that would vary continuously from one value to another. The term factor has its origin in the terminology of experimental design. In experimental design, when we are talking about an experiment, we have categories into which an experimental trial can be divided. These categories correspond to factors in R. Each of the categories that is included within a factor is known as a level. So the origin of this would be something like the level of a dosage of a drug or something like that. But it's, a, it's broader than just a level in that sense. It simply means a different kind of category. Sometimes we call factors grouping variables because they are basically a column in a table that you can use to group observations. The reason why factors are important is they may be required in order for some statistical tests in R to work and also for, the, for certain visualizations to run correctly. An example of a factor is sort of the classic science fair experiment you have some pots of soil and you plant beans in them. And then you give those pots varying amounts of water. Some of them you keep the soil wet, other ones you keep the soil dry. And then after a certain amount of time, you measure how tall the bean plants are. So in this example, the factor for water has two levels, wet and dry. That is the independent variable. It is also a discontinuous variable. The dependent variable, which is the one that we're measuring in the experiment, is a continuous value. It's numbers that range continuously from zero to infinity. And we can group these height observations by whether the experimental treatment that we used was wet or dry. So the wet and dry levels of the water factor are used to divide the height variable into categories. Let's begin looking at factors by seeing how we can create them from vectors. We're going to begin by creating one vector of character strings and one vector of numbers, and then the vector of character strings we are going to turn into a factor using the factor function. After we do this, we'll take a look at each of the kinds of data structures we've created to see how they differ from each other. Let's start by creating the two vectors. We've created one vector of characters, another vector of numbers. This is a continuous variable. This is a discontinuous one. We can turn the discontinuous variable into a vector by using the factor function. And when we look at this, we can see that it's identified in a different way from the character vector. It's identified as a factor with two levels, wet and dry. We can see this if we have it display the character vector. We can display the factor, and we can also display the numeric vectors. If we want to tell whether a data structure is a factor or a vector of strings, we can tell in two ways. One way is that if it's a vector of strings, each of the items is in quotation marks. Here we can see specifically it's identified as character strings. If the data structure is a factor, then we see that the levels of the factor are not in quotation marks and they are identified as levels here and also here. And it's specifically noted that this is a factor with two levels. One of the things that is interesting is that character strings are stored as strings, but factors are actually stored as numbers. 
and what we see when we display the values of the factors are actually the labels for each of the numbers. So here we're seeing the labels for each of the number values. Here we're seeing the raw number values that the labels are applied to.